welcome back to the video you all really wanted to see, ranking reconstructed linguistic ancestors, proto-languages, if English and Latin had a baby, and that baby was actually both of their parent- You know what? I don't like this hypothetical. So let's start with Proto-Germanic. How are we determining the worth of a language? Obviously, I'm just going to make inscrutable subjective judgment calls, but not just the entire language. I'm just going to translate a passage. The classic Day 9 quote often used for this is, of course, your decks aren't cool, they don't take finesse, your brain is small, and both your hands suck. In Proto-Germanic, we expect a lot of the same constructions as in English. Obviously, the words might not look the same, at least some of them won't, but it's reasonable to assume we can translate each word one for one. Your is translated as ijueraj. Now, that's actually a bit of a point of contention. In Proto-Germanic, the your is strictly a plural you, and since he has brain in the singular, we can infer thy or thine is actually the proper word. This was thinaj, that's the lemma at least. Brain, again, is bragna, which is neutral and gives the thina form of thine. Now, to be is highly irregular, less so the further back you go, but even in Proto-Germanic it was erratic. The third person singular equivalent to is was isti, small was smalaj, the language is pretty easy for an English speaker to recognize, of course. Adjectives also have two declension patterns in Germanic, the strong smalon and the weak smalo. I'll use the strong form because the Germanic strong forms are cool, it's why we say broke instead of braked. And, if you can believe it, is andi. In Proto-Germanic the stress is always on the first syllable, on some level that's convenient, on another it's kind of monotonous, but judgments are reserved for the final call. Both is actually a combination of both of those. The original word for both was just by. Hands are obviously feminine, yielding borge. Hands is handiwish, and the possessive declines like the adjective. I'm not going to mess around with suck's actual meaning this context. The literal word to suck is sukano, and the third person plural is sukandi. Sukandi's nuts got him! So, Thina Brahma is the smaller, and the both Thinos handy with Sukandi. Like I said, it's similar to English, and despite everything, I like English. Plus, it has the cool stuff like declensions, and maybe that makes it difficult to learn, but it's not like anyone is speaking it. I will admit the Z sound that Z makes is a bit off putting, but hey, at least it's not Old Norse, so I will give it 18 bicycles out of 23 paperclips. Now we can't just go ahead into Proto-Indo-European. Latin is the common ancestor of all Romance languages, but it's not a Proto-language, as evidenced by it doesn't start with Proto, which is the only criterion. I don't actually care about Proto-Italic is the thing, though, so I'm going I'm going to do Latin anyways. The Latin for U is tuus. They tend to start with T. Again, brain is a neutral noun, so it uses the neutral form tool, with the M not being pronounced and the U being nasalized. So basically, just like Germanic, the word in question is kerebrum, and the neutral form of parus is parum. The M is never pronounced. Though Latin has even more complicated verbs, the singular third person is, again, just simple est. And is a bit harder. They have atque, et, and just que, though to my understanding, et is best if it's two otherwise unrelated clauses. Hand is obviously still feminine, though it uses a seemingly masculine ending stem, us. Ah, well, the plural this forms has a different set of inflections with the lengthened manus, and tuus forms tui, while ambo forms ambi. Though suck is not Latin in origin, suction is. The ending uses the same thematic onti, yielding a similar sugunt. Sugunti's nuts got him! So, we have tumum kerebru est parum et ambai tuai manus sugunt. Now, that's not entirely right. They like to put the object before the verb, so it would be tumum kerebru parum est. Overall, I'm not in love with nasalization, so why didn't I count that against Germanic? Because Germanic grew out of it. We had the ingbionic nasal spiron law, thank you very much, but Latin is still cavorting around as French saying couchon. It's pathetic. At least the verbs are kind of cool. Overall, Ziniop gives it 3.5 stars. Pure, Pure imagination, political pro-capitalist, and Jewish slogan all over, but the image is worth it. Proto-Slavic is the first language using non-Latin symbols, namely these things. You may recognize these as the Miakiznak and Tjordiznak that affect the previous consonants, that's the origin of them, but these are just very short versions of E and U. Also, we once again need to mark where the stress occurs in a word because we never got around to fixing it to the first syllable, or more accurately, we're marking something, because Proto-Slavic has a pitch accent system where the down tone is a rising tone. Toy, I told you to watch for the T is the masculine form of your. It's not hard to see the connection between the different languages at this level, though I suppose if you pick simple words it becomes easier. 
Brain is mozgu, a masculine noun, to be, buti, actually changes into esti in the third person singular. Mal, the equivalent of small, this word is actually related to small. P.I.E. does a thing where s just kind of disappears at the start of words sometimes. And is e. I don't need to keep telling you what gender hands are, but instead of simply pluralizing both, makes use of the defunct dual case yielding ronza. The word for both inflects similarly, which makes sense since it is the template for dual meaning, as oba. Like all Slavic verbs, to suck has two forms, the perfective and imperfective, which loosely correspond to to suck and to be sucking. Using the perfective, we produce susete. Susete's nuts, got him! Overall, that makes toy mozgu estimal i oba tvai ronce susete. My pronunciation is probably poor, and I really don't like pitch accents, so I'll give it an ugh. So we've waited long enough, and by long enough I mean like three minutes. Where's Proto-Indo-European? Well, PIE doesn't have possessive pronouns. The best I can do is the genitive, dewe, which should go after the brain. The brain is either moskos, which can also mean bone marrow, as you can imagine, or mrek, with some kind of suffix. PIE is all about roots and suffixes, so I'm going to get nasty, as they say. I'm going to use the vanilla o stem, though, forming a masculine noun. PIE is one of the few languages that can say to be isn't irregular. And you may recognize hesti, from the previous to be's, a good root for small is may, and nos can form an adjective, hence minor. For and, we actually do have to use the Latin system of que, more specifically the enclitic, no relation to the clitoris, makes sense because an enclitic is a shortened form of a word and those things are friggin' massive. More specifically, it's also jammed onto the end of the previous word. Both is the same as the bo in both, the b in ambi, and the be in obe. It's bo. Stuck in dual case, the feminine is pehe. Latin and Germanic both have strange forms for hand. The authentic is the one similar to the Greek kairos, tesor. Add in the dual ending, that leaves seug, the root for suck, almost always in zero grade. The typical athematic ending for the third person dual is, say it with me, tes. But since g is a voiced consonant, I'll use the thematic root instead. There's no one to stop me. So, mrekos tewe hesti minosque pehe tesorhe sugetes. We don't know if I'm pronouncing the palatovelar in hand correctly, and we don't know if I'm pronouncing the laryngeals correctly. Overall, PIE is just confusing and poorly illuminated. That gives it an incredible amount of aura, and frankly, it's alluring in its concealment. The same reason censored hentai is always better. Anyway, I give it two thumbs up. So, that's as far back as we can go. Unlike life, language evolved multiple times. Well, life probably did too, but only one of them stuck. So, we jump over to a nearby language family, proto uralic Proto-Uralic is very hard to reconstruct. However, even modern Finnish uses a genitive instead of a possessive, so it's not impossible. Tina is the reconstruction of U, and N is the genitive suffix. The Finnish word for brain, aivot, is from the reconstructed einge, somehow. The verb for to be is believed to be from wole, and blessedly, it's also believed there was no ending for the third person singular. I couldn't find a word for small, but we do have shenka, which means light or thin, so take it or leave it. I think I'm going to give up on including both. It's hard enough as it is. The word for hand was kate, and the dual marker has been reconstructed as ka. Also, I couldn't find a word for and. Can I please get out of this language soon? To suck is a pretty common verb. We are mammals after all, and that is definitely why I chose it. So the root is ime, and this website says the dual third person ending is ki. I probably shouldn't trust it, but what am I going to do? Just put ime plus the third person dual ending? No, I got to take risks. So, tinan ainge wole shenka, tinan katek imeki. It is worth noting this one sucked up the most of my time by far. It was a brutal reminder of how little we know about languages outside of Indo-European ones, but also it was very nice. Just a simple root on the end, no ablaut, no mobile pitch accent, thematic stem. I give it an A tier, but also that does make it a bit boring, and all the other ones are just as hard to research. Well then we might as well make a bit of a compelling narrative. Remember when I said not all languages are connected? Well, say hello to Proto-Altaic. Proto-Altaic is a heavily discredited theory connecting Mongolian, Turkic, and the Tungusic languages, which you probably haven't heard about. There are similarities, but nowadays linguists assume this was convergent rather than divergent. Nevertheless, people still love drawing parallels, and I'm a people. So the Proto-Turkic word for you is se. This is actually quite similar to the Proto-Tungusic word C, less similar to the Mongolian Qi, but 
Most people don't actually reconstruct, just speculate about similar sounding words, but t to s is a really common variance in proto languages. We see it in the evolution of Finnish, PIE personal pronouns, and I see no reason not to have it in the fabled Proto Altaic, giving the reconstructed t as the OG pronoun. The genitive ending in all three languages involves an n in Proto Turkic, which you'll soon learn is the most well reconstructed. It's ning. Now, the final nasals are really easy to just slip into a nasalization and then get lost. It happened in all the Romance languages and also Germanic. So, I feel ning or ening is the most reasonable genitive reconstruction, so tining. However, the ending ing is also a weak declension in Turkic, so it's possible that it was an innovation in that language, and the original ending n is the original. Of course, it's very pointless to speculate about proto altaic because it most likely did not exist, so let's just go with the original. You can tell I'm stalling because I don't want to move on to another word. Ah well, no use. So, the proto Turkic word for brain is beny or perhaps beng. These are respectively compared to heki and manlai in Mongolian. For some reason, I don't really get it. Now, the latter does have potential. M and B variate a lot. I mean, it even happens in this specific route. But there's still a lot of ground to cover between manlai and beng. Now, I'm not, like, good at reconstructing languages, but neither is anyone who believes in Altaic, so we should be fine. The middle ground might lie somewhere around Banglai. Again, there's a similarity between to be, which is bol in both cases. However, it seems more likely that to be is omitted entirely, since that's how it is in Mongolian, and there is no helping verb for Proto-Turkic simple verbs in this person and number, although Proto-Turkic verbs are really complicated. And Mongolian is also weird. So, small in Proto-Turkic was kichig, which is often compared to the Proto-Mongolic kitig. That means puppy, but the two terms are pretty similar. Half of the Turkic languages use it to mean puppy, but that's prob uh, that's definitely because the Mongolian one is influencing it. So hands are elig in Proto-Turkic, and the closest Mongolian word people proposed is alaga, which means palm. And even more curiously, the Proto-Tungusic is ngala. I think we'd be better off cutting our losses and settling on elaga. Pluralization is debated in Proto-Turkic, but most of the proposed endings end in r. This matches up with the modern Mongolian plural nar, yielding elaiganir. The Mongolic and Tungusic forms of tesuk are remarkably similar. In Mongolian, this k shifts into a h, so it's not unreasonable to assume the same thing happened in Tungusic, so that leaves the ending. In Turkic, the er suffix is the one both used for the present participle and the simple aorist. So, did proto turkic like, not have a present tense? Anyway, that yields kukur. Kukur's nuts got him! So, tining banglai kitug, tining elaiganir kukur. Honestly, the more you read about Altaic theory, the more cognates you can start to see. It really is weird. Of course, we could always have made mistakes in reconstruction, but I like it, both as a joke and as a crack theory, so I'll put it in second place. And that's all the time we have for today. If you want me to do more, I can do more. But if you don't, then I can still do more, but I most likely won't. And remember, if you wash your hands often enough, you can keep the crippling guilt at bay.